Hey everybody, welcome back to episode two of Talk Your Model Reality, where we are merging two perspectives. One is from Talk Your Walk vlogs. And my model reality, a blog. Yes, and we're going to share with you a little bit more about portfolio building. Yeah. The big question about portfolio building is, you know, typically, how much do I invest and what goes in it? And we got your back. We're going to cover that today. Yes, we're going to cover it all. Yes. So, um, you know, kind of my first question is, what is going into a portfolio? So the main thing you need to do, and this is kind of, this is a big important first step when you're looking into building your portfolio. What does your market want, right? Mm -hmm. You, instead of just going out and shooting all willy-nilly and not having a plan. <laughs> willy like, nilly. I know, you need to have like a, a, a list of the shots that you know you need for your portfolio. So first of all, know your market. Are you more commercial? Are you more high fashion editorial? Um, here in Kansas City, you're going to be on the commercial side, right? Absolutely. Um, but every portfolio, you need a really good headshot and a really good full body shot. Mm -hmm. And then some just images showing your personality and your range with Absolutely. your facial expressions and your poses. Yeah, I think in this market specifically, we are very commercial heavy. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the type of clients that we, we have here in this area. Now, when I say in this area, I'm not just talking about Kansas City. Um, yeah. Our market actually goes almost as far up as like Minnesota yeah, and all the way as south as Texas. Yep. We call it that kind of like the Midwest uh, Midwest region. Uh -huh. It entails St. Louis, Chicago, which is its own really big market, but they are still a Midwest market. They are, yeah. And um, within that market, you'll see a lot of commercial. Yep. So you can bring them a portfolio that, like Darcy is saying, that looks like, you know, um, a girl next door. Yeah. Um, depending on your age range, it can look like a mom, a sister, a friendly person that, you yeah. know, is an associate or for the males. It looks like a professional guy or yeah. just a guy next door. Yeah. Very relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, you know, if you were to take this portfolio to another area, um, they may say you need more high fashion. You need yeah. more editorial. And that's fine. Um, but just know your market and like Darcy is saying, you know, know what you're going to put into it and that it's going to give you the return of the type of clients you have in the yep. area. And Love it that. is, yep. And it's very important to know your region just because your portfolio here in the Midwest is not going to look the same as your portfolio in New York, mm -hmm. right? So if you're signed in multiple markets, you're going to have different portfolios. Yep. So knowing what you need to put into it, step one is the biggest thing. When you know your market, you know what it is that you have to offer and yep. if you're fitting in that area. So for instance, um, I actually don't have a lot of swimsuit in my mm -hmm. um, portfolio. I have a lot of fitness. Yes. And the reason being is um, you can get a lot of the same type of full body range, expression, strength, and all of that in a yoga outfit. Yeah. Um, that may be cropped, arms are out, you can see full legs, you can see the tennis shoes yeah. and everything like that. Or maybe I'm in a yoga pose, but those clients are here a little bit more oh, yeah. than a swimsuit client. Yeah. Where's the beach, right? Yeah. We, we don't have a beach. So we don't have a beach. We don't have swimmer clients <laughs> here in town. So why would you port fill your portfolio with swimmer shots? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this, uh -huh. how many of each type of photo and when I say type of photo that's commercial high fashion editorial or um black and white or color mm -hmm. like how many of each type of photo should I have in my portfolio in a heavily commercial market about 95 percent of your portfolio should be commercial absolutely um, you can have some black and whites thrown in there but I mean they're going to want to see the color of your skin the color of your hair the color of your eyes mm -hmm. um, black and whites kind of get a little more moody mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. kind of only a couple of those are good to have um, but only a few of those but really heavily commercial mm -hmm. but then throw in a few of those fashion shots just Absolutely. to show that you have the range you can do it I will say this as well people get really really comfortable outside but it's in studio where yeah. i think a lot of the magic happens mm -hmm. you can control the lighting in studio yeah. which therefore offers your portfolio something that looks a little bit more 
cohesive or crisp. Yeah. Now everybody has their like fun photo shoot outside brick wall. Anybody could do that. But what can you do with your posing and your movement, which I think you do so well. Oh, thank you. Um, when you're in studio and on a backdrop, or maybe you're um, amongst a nice couch in a living mm. room, you have an opportunity to show some different things yep. when you're in studio and you don't have to worry about excessively editing that guy walking across the street with yeah. his dogs and all of that fun stuff out. So yeah. having the, I would say the studio is huge, especially just because of our client base in the commercial world, you're shooting a lot of clothing and things like that on just a plain backdrop, right? Yeah. So having a lot of that in your portfolio, showing that you're capable of doing that. Absolutely. And then some lifestyle stuff thrown in for the local lifestyle magazines you may have in your area. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of switch gears really fast and talk according mm -hmm. to what um, I know best, which is hand modeling. Mm -hmm. I get booked so often for hand modeling here in Kansas City. That is kind of a very niche category where um, you are actually asked for your images um, within the casting week. So if you're shooting, you know, um, for instance, Hallmark cards, that's a client mm -hmm. that I work for pretty often, um, they're going to want to see how long and short your hands are within a certain like time frame yeah. of that shoot. They're going to pay for you to get your nails done, hopefully, and, and you know, make, maybe comp you back for what they needed, particularly for that shoot. But you don't have to put hand modeling photos in your portfolio. No. <laughs> it's a very kind of like last minute thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have to be ready and willing to say, you know, yeah, I got a burn or no, I don't have any tattoos up to my elbows. They're looking for some things like that. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that you, if you have tattoos, you can't have a strong portfolio because there is oh, definitely, yeah. a definitely a market, market for that. Mm -hmm. But tattoos is something that they're always kind of looking for and wondering. And same for piercings. They yeah. want to know how many you have and where they're at. So if you have one, you better rock it, you know. Um, mine is fairly well hidden. Um, it's under my rib cage. So a lot of times I can pass in a swimsuit and a yoga top or um, things like that. And they don't see it. But yeah. I do write it down. I'm very forefront about Hey, this Where is it's... something you don't see in my portfolio, but I do have no, just in case. Yeah, that's so. always good to mention. Anything that you showing it in your portfolio, if you have the opportunity to, is always good, just so they can see that you do. If you have a tattoo placement somewhere on your body, um, but if it doesn't show in any of those images, definitely disclosing that is yeah, big. yeah, for sure. Um, also, hair and um, <laughs> hair and eyebrows and. Tattoos and piercings are all kind of in the same category. If you don't have blonde hair anymore and you once did, but your portfolio is filled with blonde hair, now you're a brunette, Update that's going to be so confusing. Oh, yeah. Your portfolio has to be reflective of who you are. So keeping in that those moment. Things, yeah, yeah. Keeping those things up to date is so essential. Um, if you didn't have a tattoo in your portfolio that's visible and now you do, the client's going to go, what the oh, heck? Yeah. Yeah. What it, when did this happen? We didn't know that. We would have casted someone else who didn't have a neck kiss tattoo. Yes. <laughs> right? Well, I remember too when um, I chopped my hair off. I used to have really long hair. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but now I chopped it off and had to redo my whole, whole portfolio because yeah. all my images were full of my long hair. Yeah. So you don't want to mislead the client thinking that they're booking a model with long hair Absolutely. and you show up on set and they're like, hold on. Yeah. You're not the girl that I booked. And keep this in mind too. If you've got a gap and you go and get braces, you might have been casted for that gap. You have to be careful to not significantly alter your body without telling your agent. Mm -hmm. Or if you're freelance, making it known, hey, this is what I look like now. Quick selfie, you know? Yeah. This is what's changed and we just need to be transparent about that yeah. when you have a portfolio built off of person A and now you look like person B or C. Yes. So, well, and I will say too, you don't need a ton of images in your portfolio. That's good. Yeah, you really only need, I wouldn't go more than 20 images. So models think like, oh, I need tons and tons of every photo I've taken needs to go on my portfolio. Mm -hmm. No, Yeah. only your strongest images that you have, um, any magazine tear sheets that you have, you know, if you were in an, an editorial or something, putting that in your portfolio is important, but you really only want your strongest images. That might only be 10 images. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's fine. You only At want the good ones good in ones. there. Yeah. <laughs> Just your top, your top photos are the only ones that go in your portfolio. Now, I don't often um, or haven't recently worked mm -hmm. with a photographer that does high editing. 
Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, there's apps out there now that make you look like an entirely different person. Oh my gosh, person. it's wild. So, what the apps can you do. Know, yeah, the apps is just a rabbit hole to go down. But I personally am thinking, you know, I, I've seen people get high fashion edited images. Their nose looks different. Their lips oh, look yeah. different. Their cheeks look different. Their and skin is just flawless. Yeah, flat. Yeah. yeah. Be sure to have, if you're going to have those high edited images, also make sure that you're reflecting like who you really are, which is what digitals are. Yeah. Tell them about digitals. So digitals are basically just your model mugshots is what I like to call them. Just because when <laughs> somebody requests, and clients do this, they might have seen your portfolio, but they want to see what you look like unedited, unstyled, just completely unfiltered. Mm -hmm. So they want you just in front of a blank wall, no hair and makeup styling, very plain, just a fitted outfit. And you literally just stand facing the camera, Get your head shot, get a full body shot, maybe do a profile, yeah. and that's it. That's and it. Don't touch them. Yes. You send them just like that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And that no shows edits. the texture of your skin uh -huh. and curves in your body. It shows your authentic posture. Yes. Sometimes it does. you, you know, you have to make sure that your posture is in place um, in those digitals as well, because you know, you don't want to look like a slouching cow. No. When most of your photos look one way and then you suddenly take digitals that, you know, look different. So um, when it comes to your portfolio too, what kind of photographers you work with is huge. Some photographer styles um, are different than others. Some really like to heavily edit their images. Um, some don't hardly edit at all. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, play with really moody lighting. Some don't. So getting a photographer that knows what you need for a model portfolio because for your portfolio you don't want all the heavy editing you don't want the harsh lights and it might look cool for that image but the client wants to see what you look like mm -hmm. not all this heavy editing so Absolutely. finding the right photographer to get the right photos for your portfolio is really important. pay for a professional yes pay for a professional a lot it of will... times this involves some money yes right? like but that's the investment you need to make into your career and it will pay off tenfold. So Absolutely. it's totally worth it. Yeah, I, I did a lot of trade for print when I was building my portfolio initially, mm -hmm. but they were quality photographers that knew um, me, my body, my style, my type and the market. And yeah. they were able to say, you know, you know, this was a couple of really good images. Like you should consider adding these to your portfolio. And I'm like, gladly, like, thank you. You know, I, yeah. I'll pay you $20 because I'm a broke college student and I'll try right? you know, to compensate you somehow. But, you know, if you're interested in building your portfolio off of trade for trade for print, just be sure that you're working with people who are not going to mistreat your images, mistreat your portfolio, outdo yeah. themselves and morphing you into a different person, but are truly capturing what it is that you need yeah. for your lookbook. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So there are some um, very important images that, or images that you might think are really, really good images, but should not be included in your portfolio. Um, one of those images is runway shots. Like you might look yeah. bomb on that runway yeah. and you might've killed that pose at the end and that photo looks amazing. It doesn't have a place in your portfolio. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're probably wondering why, like what is it about that image that's different? Um, Honestly, your portfolio, again, is about you as a person and the features. Whereas a lot of those runway pictures that you may have are you made up, you look like a different person. It's about the outfit. Yeah. Runway yeah. is specifically you as a coat hanger um, displaying mm -hmm. whatever, you know, artwork is there. And so you're right. Like, unfortunately, those images don't belong in your portfolio. Yeah. Now, I'm going to switch gears one more time. If you are an actor... It is okay to put some of those, you know, unique moments mm -hmm. in your actor's reel. Um, I'm going to explore a little bit more into that in a different episode, but I personally know that um, there are some times where they want to see that eclectic side. Oh, they yeah. want to see those different moments, um, but on the acting runway and modeling, you know, on camera things, they don't want to see you looking like Harley Quinn, you know, coming down the runway. They want to see you as a true person and... Um, your portfolio is your your statement of mm -hmm. what you can what you can do, and yeah, they want a little versatility, but they don't need you to. Yeah, even if it's like the an amazing photo, just doesn't have a place in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because even if you're looking to book a runway job and they're flipping through your portfolio, they still don't want to see those runway shots. Mind Sorry. blowing, but oh well. <laughs> um, selfies, another thing that doesn't have any place in your portfolio. Um, anything that you would post on social media like that doesn't fit. Yeah. I'm just not very professional. 
Well, thank you for watching this segment of building your portfolio. We hope that some of the tips and tricks are gonna allow you to present a por professional portfolio and help you launch your way into a successful modeling career. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you.